Hello there. Uh, this quick video is going to be an introduction of uh, how to use the MFC Edit program to uh, program and set up your MFC 101 controller from Fractal Audio Systems. Here's the uh, pedal that we know and love. Very powerful MIDI controller and um, it's a little difficult to uh, program at all. I mean if you're looking at the uh, user manual um, it's very clear but it's a lot of steps and a lot of steel foot switch presses in a specific sequence to get it all programmed so we created MFC edit which is a software application runs on your uh, Mac your uh, Windows or your Linux computer and it's a whole lot easier and friendlier and uh, it doesn't have such a steep learning curve so without further ado I'm gonna shut down all these uh, extra windows and I'm going to launch the MFC edit program for you to see. There's um, here we are launching it we just uh, click the icon like anybody else on any other standard application and uh, this is the songs tab. There are some uh, things that everybody pretty much wants to do with their uh, MFC 101. They want to program in their uh, IA switches, their instant access switches need programming um, they typically want to assemble sets so they can have groups of sets they can step through them for live performance and they also want to enter their songs and which presets in the AxeFX uh, those songs will uh, trigger and select so you'll notice that uh, the way MFC Edit is organized um, is the tabs across the top much like a spreadsheet or on your browser you have tabs here's the songs tab the sets tab where you'll enter all your sets and manage your sets the instant access switches tab where you would uh, program and manage all of your instant access switches here are your presets uh, how you configure all your different presets and so forth uh, we'll go into these in a lot more detail um, the internal CC's and change maps are over here as well for your uh, NCC's very powerful feature that's somewhat underused as is the uh, XFX preset transmit map. Uh, here's your MIDI and your pedal for your MIDI channels when you have other than the XFX uh, you can have a lot of other MIDI devices connected and controllers from here. Your external pedals are also on this page like your expression pedals, your wah pedals, you configure all of those here and some other settings. Here's your base configuration for which mode that you want this running in whether you're connected to an XFX2 in this case or none XFX standard or the XL the new and wonderful FX XL um, and a whole bunch of other parameters we'll go into them in a little more detail in a moment just want to give you a quick extra view then last but not least uh, is the extras page where you can uh, set user preferences display this display that don't display the other so on and so forth here of course is our XFX. Here's a handy dandy little uh, hex converter tool if you are inclined to be entering hex but pretty much you don't need to. If an error happens and I made one happen so we'd have a record of it it'll pop up a little window you can copy and paste the contents and mail it off to support at mfcedit.com. So we can just close that down. Alright so without further ado the first thing you're going to want to do is actually um, capture uh, a SysX dump from the MFC. The MFC 101 pedal um, is unlike the Axe FX in that communication communication with it is not real time. In other words, the only way you can communicate with it is um, either between the connection between the pedal and the Axe FX, uh, where it can do some minimal uh, communication. Uh, but to actually edit its content. You actually have to dump a SysX file captured on your computer, uh, edit that, and then send it back to the MFC 101. It's not like the XFX program, XEdit program, where you can do real time control of the device. So, that being said, up here I put the Fractal Bot program uh, right up here on the toolbar so you can launch it and you can send and receive files directly from the XFX over here. Additionally, um, the MFC edit program has a built-in transmitter receiver. It'll send SysX files directly to the MFC 101 and capture them directly from the MFC 101 and you can edit them right here. Uh, we won't actually do that now because that takes a little time for the transmission to happen 
and I don't want to bore everybody staring at a, a progress orange progress bar s scrolling across the screen. So shut that down. I've already uh, downloaded a file from the MFC, and uh, you select it like you would any other file. In this case, Friendly Confines. It's a venue we play at. I downloaded that, so we already have that. Um, all right, so without further ado, I am going to go to the uh, songs first. I've ordered them from left to right in the order in which I most frequently use them, actually. Um, but probably at some point I'll make these tabs reorderable. That's not terribly important. Is that a word? Reorderable? I don't know. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to go to songs because before you can enter sets, you have to have songs to put in the sets. So uh, here we go. One of the cool features, um, one of the many cool features of MFC Edit is to be able to see what you're working with um, on your XFX. Over here we have uh, the slot where you enter the name. You see the column there where you enter the name. Uh, you can enter up to seven characters, which is all that the MFC 101 allows. And so you have to condense the name. Like this would be Long Train Running for uh, from the Doobie Brothers. This would be the Authority Song. Uh, just put Author in there. If I type in something too long, it's going to complain. Add, uh, oh, that's too long. You can't do that, so I'm going to truncate it for you. So that would be the authority song. Um, over here, you'll notice we've got 15 columns because you can have up to 15 presets assigned to a song. In the MSC 101, um, I rarely use more than one, although there are a couple. Uh, like Hotel California, it has a number of presets because of the harmonies on the arpeggios and a bunch of other things that... Uh, are particular to Hotel California being performed by a single guitar. So, um, the other thing that's good to know is that when you mouse over any one of these preset numbers, um, it'll show the name that appears in the AxeFX. So, if you have a name, if this uh, preset number five is named in the AxeFX, it actually shows the AxeFX name, Clean Amp One. What's this one? Small Town. This is my AC Piezo sound for Small Town by uh, John Kruger Mellencamp. Um, this is Hot Blooded, I think it's Journey, um, Victim of Love, Eagles. So these are the actual names that you're familiar with. So it's not just a number. You can actually see what you're doing, what you're going to get in the uh, AxeFX. You enter numbers, uh, you, you make your selections by basically just choosing um, from a list. Scintillating uh, 221 is what? It says Night Moves. It's probably another acoustic type. Yeah, ACP is another patch. Um, Highway Star, 27. So many songs share the same preset. As you can see up here, we got one and one over here. This is what, uh, so probably slightly dirty. Can't get enough of your love. It's a dirty sounding, uh, but not very dirty sounding amp. Um, where do these names come from? Good question. I'm glad you asked. Um, over here, uh, you can import the AxeFX presets. And then uh, we actually have a little window. If you want to see them all the time, you can pop them up. So if you don't want to select them from a list, you can uh, and you can sort these and, and search for them with a string here. You can just say, I want the fast modern, modern. You'll notice that this cell here, the one that's selected, will change. If I want uh, the brown sound, I just click on that one. It'll change that preset there. So it's very nice. You can either select from a list or you can actually just pop up the list of presets that are in the AxeFX um, that I've imported into this uh, MFC edit so I can just pick them and select them. Um, there are lots of power features, moving songs around, sorting them, inserting, deleting, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, I won't go into those now since this is just an overview. So next up, once we have our songs, um, we, that's all we actually need uh, to do. But uh, it's very handy, and I use the sets feature a lot for the different venues that I perform in. So we'll go to that next by simply clicking on the sets um, tab. So the Sets tab um, is where I actually uh, assemble all of my sets. You'll notice up here and all across the top is the set name. These are all the defaults that come in the MSE 101. I've already created one called Friendly. Again, you're limited to seven characters because of the MSC 101. Um, to change that, you double click on it and you can type in a new set name. That's, it's that simple to change the set name. Uh, and then you choose the songs. Uh, a couple of ways you can do that. Uh, you can one click of the mouse in a cell and it'll pull down a list uh, alphabetically sorted of all the songs you have entered on your songs tab that we just showed you. So let's say I want to do start the, the gig with Highway uh, Star, then I want to do Honky Tonk Women, 
and then I want to play Run Like Hell by Pink Floyd. Uh, so it's that simple. Um, now I can move this column across. There are lots of uh, right-clicking. Um, the mouse anywhere in any of the windows gives you uh, help as well as a whole lot of power options. I'll just actually show you the help quickly. You get a nugget of help. Uh, right-clicking on any control, or any button, or anything, it'll pop up context-sensitive help. Um, so this is uh, where it describes uh, some of the options and what they do and how they behave in English, plain English terms. And uh, quite often, you'll find a reference here to the buttons that you would press in the sequence if you were pressing steel buttons on the MSC 101. Um, it'll give you information about that too and how it's going to behave. So that's the show nugget option. Pretty much every screen has show nugget on almost all of the controls. The other thing I wanted to show you here was the pop-up song palette. So we can either choose our tunes from a list, um, which is available from every cell, um, Sister Golden Hair, or uh, if that's a hassle, we can pop up the songs palette, which is all the songs that we have on the songs tab back here. And this palette will pop up, and we can just uh, drag and drop them. So we want Hotel California after Green River. We'll just drop it in there. Uh, we want Heartbreaker instead of that and let's play China Grove by the Doobie Brothers over here like that so now we've got uh, we've selected them like that we can sort them reorder them uh, all those good things again you can see here we've got all these power features I won't go into them all right now because there's a lot of them uh, for power editing but you get the gist you can uh, drag and drop those things switching away from here automatically close the uh, palette because you can't use it over here so this is one of the most frequently used screens. Uh, people want to edit their IA switches, their instant access switches. Here are the names. You can type them in, change them, do whatever you need to do. Um, I have, uh, they're all standard switches, but you can configure them on your MFC 101. I actually have switches four and five set to scene increment and scene decrement. Those are the names I gave them. But th this is the cool column over here. If you look over here, uh, I've got scene increment over here. So um, if I want switch number four, which I've labeled scene increment to be scene increment, it's right there, right? If I say, I don't want that for scene increment anymore, I really want to use that um, that switch. I want to use it for my flanger one block. So that'll be the bypass on my flanger one block. I can turn it on or off. If I don't like my scene decrement, I can say, let me assign that to uh, drive X, Y. Now if I hit five, it'll switch between the X and Y blocks of my um, drive to block. <clears throat> so it's it's really that simple. You just select them from a list. They're sorted alphabetically, easy to find. <clears throat> what kind of pedal is it? So uh, somewhere here I actually have, um, well I don't, but I'm going to do that now so you can see. I'm going to select a pitch, pitch block. So over here on five I have a pitch block. When you, if it's still, if your switch type is toggle, it'll turn it on or it'll turn it off each press. But I want a moment. So when I'm playing something, if I want a phrase to be to switch in the pitch block during a phrase, so that I get harmony on a specific phrase, I hold down the button and release it when I want the harmony to stop. Uh, is the switch going to be global? And then all the additional settings over here, all the extended settings, very powerful. Lots of. Uh, Control changes and program change commands, as well as custom MIDI messages, can all be entered over here. There's lots of validation that's pulled down lists. You can enter values that are incorrect, etc., etc. So that's your IA switches. The next thing I'm going to show you is your presets screen. So the presets tab that we've selected over here is where you would manage your presets and make any changes. Um, you can select the preset you want to operate on, you want to change, you want to modify, what have you. Uh, number 47, for instance. Um, go to 48, 50, so forth, and then preset names if you've named them. Uh, in this case, uh, these are all the default names. You also, if you don't want to scroll through the list and get it, you can type it here or you can say next, 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 and so forth. So look over here, actually, you'll see the AxeFX preset name is displayed as a courtesy. So when you select this guy, this patch over here, this is the MFC 101 preset number 56, as you can see. And when it calls up 50, preset 56 or patch 56 in the Axe FX, it's the Screamin' Plexi. It's the actual patch. And if we go up another one, it's the High Power Brilliant. So when you're operating on one, it's not just the numbers. You actually see which 
preset in the AxeFX is you're actually messing with. So that's really handy as well. It says the alt preset is global. You can handle everything you can configure regarding presets can be done from this screen. Um, let's. Uh, these are our per preset external switches. You can set your external switches here. Say, um, uh, I want the external switch number one, and I want to do what I want to do with that. I want to use that for my wah block bypass for turning. Uh, it's in my external switch for turning my wah wah block on and off. Um, if you want different values, you can enter them here as well. It's toggle. Uh, it can be momentary or auto off. Uh, I want toggle for wah wah because that's that's conventionally how you would use it. So you've got your four um, external switches here. Same thing applies to your pedals. You know your expression pedals, wah wah pedals, or volume pedal, what have you. Uh, you can set those up here for this specific preset, and each preset can be different. We've gone to 58. We go back to preset 57. It shows us the configuration that we made there. Um, just quickly, I'm actually going to uh, scroll to a little more interesting one. Um, this is hotel, my Hotel California patch. I've named it because it does have some special things going on. Uh, you'll notice it also points to the patch called Hotel California in the M in the AxeFX over here. There's no alternate preset; it's turned off. Uh, you, you can set it to any other preset, your alt preset, or you can set it to off, or you can set it to back or global. Use the global preset. I won't go into too much detail here. You'll have plenty of time to do that when you have the program. If you come down here, though, and you'll notice that um, the instant access switches initial state. Here are your 17A. Uh, IA switches. You'll notice that switch 8 is on and uh, as the mouse over shows, the tooltip shows it's IA switch number 8, it's phaser 1 is on there. These guys are all off. What's over here? Um, this is volume 1 and this is cab 2. So these switches are on by default when I switch to this, when I select this preset automatically these switches are in the on state. All, everything else is in the off state. Now if I uh, go up to number 101 over here it's showing me Hotel Harmonies so I've named it Hotel Harm as well so this is where all the harmonies are for the arpeggios and uh, other harmonized parts in the song Hotel California notice here I've got an auto off type switch and this is a this is a pitch shift to bypass so it turns on the harmonies or not sorry about that obviously my dog was under the desk um, Okay, so I was just going to show you the, the uh, pitch shift bypass, so uh, when I want to kick in the harmonies or kick them off, so on and so forth. Also notice here that I have an alternate preset over here, so when it goes into solo time, I kick the, uh, I press the same preset number switch, and it'll go to the alternate preset, turns off harmonies, and lets me do the solo. Also notice uh, down here, I have an internal CC state, which is initial state, which is um, on. All the others are off. Over here, I've got different things selected. I've got reverb on as well uh, during the solo. It's got some reverb happening there. So that's uh, basically it. You can turn your switches on and off um, to your liking. This is the initial state uh, of the switch when you select the patch. Um, over here is your program change. Um, if you're sending program change on channel 3, this is the program change that would go. If you have some other equipment connected to it, uh, you would use this over here. Again, you can enter your custom MIDI messages over here. It's all hex. You can't screw it up. It's all done for you. It'll figure out the length automatically for you, etc., etc., etc. Now I feel like uh, the king of Siam. All right. Um, your internal change control codes. Um, hope, hopefully, you know what they are. If you're a newbie, you probably haven't used them a whole lot. Uh, but they're very powerful. Uh, you can name them yourself. Again, over here, you can select which channel you want it to go on. You can't enter anything invalid. Um, you can turn it off. You can select the number, the on or off numbers. You can turn it off, or so you can actually select select the value you want to send with it. Um, uh, so those are your internal CCs. These are inbound program change maps. I don't want to teach that, but this is how you configure um, incoming MIDI change map messages. Uh, they may come in as one number from a piece of external equipment, but you actually may want to select something other. For example, if we get uh, program change number six come in and we actually don't want it to be six, we want it to go to 
14, um, we'd enter that. So anytime the MSC 101 sees a program change of 6 coming in, it's going to actually change to its preset number 14. AxeFX preset transmit map, hopefully you know what those are already. Um, when, uh, when, a, when you're sending out um, a program change command, uh, it'll typically send the number uh, of the preset, but you're, you're free to override that here. Like, for instance, specifically for the uh, XL, the XL can now handle um, about, uh, I think it's 768 different preset numbers. So um, there aren't 768 presets in the MFC uh, 101. So what you do is you say, well, give me a preset number, um, I don't know, preset number 240. And when I get number, when I select preset number 240 in the MFC 101, I really want it to go to preset number 900, or or to send a program change of uh, 567. You'll notice the value must be less than 384. That is because it's pretty smart. It knows that I'm connected to an AxeFX2, which doesn't have the capability. If I had selected an AxeFX XL, it would allow me to select a higher preset number. So it does a lot of validation for you to help you out. Uh, enough on that detail for now. Uh, so MIDI and pedal, if you have a lot of other MIDI devices connected, then this is where you would set them up. Um, you put in a nice friendly name like a Chan 1 isn't usually the Axe FX, but you can put it anywhere. That's the default. Channel 2 uh, is not particularly useful. That may be your Korg, this, that, or the other. Uh, channel 4 is not a meaningful name either. You may have something connected to there. That may be your um, amplifier a tube amp, a clean and overdrive channel switch, uh, whatever. So you would name them here so you'd, you'd know what you're working with all the time. External pedals, uh, minimum value, maximum value. I actually have uh, two pedals connected to mine, uh, external pedals connected to mine. Um, this particular one over here would be my wah pedal and these are the values, the maximum value when it's floored and the minimum value when it's all the way up. You can set those, of course just uh, selecting them from a list, what, whatever the values are. Um, the AxeFX transmit channel, typically it's one. Display offset, if you've got your AxeFX to display offset starting one through uh, 384, then you would select one here. MIDI receive channel, uh, I won't go into all these details, program change, blah, blah, blah. COM port, I will mention this one quickly. Um, because I'm running uh, uh, a Mark II here. You'll notice up here it says Mark I, Mark II, and I've got firmware 3.5. It uh, gets that information from the SysX messages. Um, it gives me two options. I can use the MIDI port or the expansion port, which people like to call Ethernet or EtherCon. It's not EtherCon. It's an RJ45. Uh, it's not Ethernet protocol at all. Please don't connect it to a computer or any networking equipment. Uh, but uh, the MIDI ports and the expansion ports are the only ones that the the Mark II MSC 101 has. If you're using a Mark III, there would be a third option would pop down here. Actually, I wonder if we can uh, possibly, oh no, I can't, I have to load up a different file. It's, uh, it stops, really stops you from hosing it up. Uh, you would also have FASLink, would also show on the list. You could also select that. Uh, I don't want to go into too much detail about all of this either. Uh, your base config, what's your AxeFX mode? We already talked about it a little bit. We're not connected to an AxeFX. We're controlling something else. We're connected to a standard, an Ultra, an FX2, or an FX2 XL. Um, what, what's your performance mode? Yeah, this is cool. You're in preset mode, you're in song mode, uh, or you can pick the set that this is on. So when you power up, it'll tell you, it'll decide what mode your MSC 101 is in, and if you're in a set mode, which set is currently selected. Uh, display offset, we know what that is. Contrast, we know what that is too. Um, global preset, uh, if you have a if you have a preset set as the global preset, then in your presets, when you choose the alt preset as global, it'll use whatever number you have selected here. Uh, again, I don't want to teach you the all MFC. All of your, your features here, your looper control, uh, your edit save, all these other things, uh, can be configured here. Your bank size, how, uh, what's your bank size? So it'll determine how many IA switches you have. And your bank style, first location, none, current, um, current bank, bank limit, uh, wrap or not wrap, uh, read the manuals on that. 
external switch hardware type this is important I will address this very quickly um, there's different kinds of hardware there's momentary and then there's toggle if you're using a, a momentary switch uh, the connection is made when you're holding it down with your foot when you release it the connection is broken MSC needs to know if it's that kind of switch or whether it's a toggle switch in which case um, you press it once it makes a connection you can release it, it the connection remains in place you press it again and the connection is disconnected um, that's important information for the MSC to know so it now knows how to behave when you press the switches IA switch links not going to go into all of that right now but um, that's a more advanced topic a little bit more advanced topic but you get the gist you can configure it all right from over here and uh, if you don't like that you can just turn it off and then there's the extra screen which I mentioned before your MSC edit home folder uh, that's the default when it installs it depending on the platform you're on it'll put it in the sensible places you're expecting to find it uh, fractal bot path name as I mentioned before uh, you can launch Fra fractal bot right from within uh, MSC edit uh, for doing transmissions and so forth um, but if it's somewhere else uh, or you, or you, it's not in the standard place then you can enter the path name or you can browse you use file browser and uh, navigate to the fractal bot executable select it and it'll put it in there display blank for off there are some screens um, like presets where these numbers are pretty busy if you would rather have them blank if there's nothing in them uh, you could set to display blank went off um, back down here uh, clear history you probably don't want to do that it just forgets all the files if, you op if you've been opening files it remembers them here it remembers your home directory clear history makes it like a fresh installation again it removes all the his historic stuff uh, pop off axe FX presets on the songs tab um, this is another one of your selections so that when you go automatically go to the tab it'll automatically pop it up for you the same thing uh, songs palette we showed you that in the songs tab if you select this every time you switch to the to the sort of the sets tab it'll pop that little window up automatically for you this little one that we uh, showed you before this guy over here so anytime you you're switching through your tabs if you hit the sets tab this will pop up automatically and when you switch away from it it'll pop it down so you can set that automatic you don't have to manually pop it up every time uh, this is open your uh, last file on launch so when you start the program it'll open the last file you had open you don't have to then go click and open and navigate and go to it and then hide window decorations uh, this is just uh, to make it look more like the X edit program from fractal it removes these borders around the window so it looks cooler the only problem is then you don't have something to grab it by so minimizing it's a pain and you can't grab it and move it if you hide the window de decorations I know it was 100 miles an hour. I know everybody's pressed for time. I made it a quick demo. It's just an overview. There are lots of powerful features in this program. You can download it for free at mscedit.com. So go to www.msc-edit.com. Download it, run it for a week for free. Uh, see what you think. Hope you like it. Hope you buy it. Thank you. Bye.